You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. So for this video, you already know from the title, we are going back to basics, back to base hex. But from this video, you know we're going back to basics with our repaint. So this is actually going to be a two-part video. Part one will be the materials. I will thoroughly list all of the basic materials and essentials that you need and why you need them, or at least why I need them and why I use them, and also some FAQs in the end. For part two, it will be a slowed down face up. You guys know we always have to do time lapses for repaint videos just because they take so freaking long. And for this one, it does have some time lapse. However, I recorded every single layer. I usually skip like at least one or two layers when I'm actually repainting a doll um, in general. But this one, I literally recorded every single layer and you guys will see how I build the colors. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the materials. If you've been part of the House of Hex for a while, you know that I have another repaint materials video. Very cringy, back in 2015. Oh my god, like, the evolution of my makeup and my teeth <laughs> is quite apparent. I want to start off by saying that I also learned from other people, obviously I did not invent this. I discovered doll repaint when I was like, I don't know, when I was like 14 maybe? And I was always very into the BJD community, specifically the Asian ball jointed doll community, like Fairyland, um, Den of Angels, all of that. I was so, so into it, I was like, I'm gonna own a BJD at least once. But then that community led me into the repaint community because the people collecting BJDs were doing the face-ups on um, toy dolls like Monster High specifically. So literally they took a lot of the BJD techniques and skills and they put it into toy line, which I thought was magic. Some of the people that I specifically learned techniques from was a No Nap Time blog. Their, their blog is actually still up and I will link it down below. Literally, it's so informative. The whole like MSC thing, I was like, oh, that's how you do it. Because not everyone was really showing it. I learned so much from that blog. Of course, Andrea from Nicole's Dreams, legendary. Oh my God, the mini fee goddess. Um, all of her repaints, all of her face-ups are so, so amazing. She is literally such an angel, and I learned so much from her. I also learned a lot from Retrograde here on YouTube, but I believe they changed their username now to Axel Spark. Um, I'm not sure if they're still doing repaints, but the videos are still there, and you can see it says Retrograde. Um, but the username is Axel Sparks, and I will link them all below so you guys can reference them. Just so you guys know, I do have my materials listed in my website, essentials.art. I'll put the links down below. And I also have like a face up tutorial there, kind of like a slow down version, which what I will be doing in part two. I figured that some people really want to see how it's done. And I'm like, you know what? Let's slow things down for a video. And that's what I'm going to be doing. And now for the materials. So of course, the main thing you'll need is a doll. You need a doll to work on. It can be a Barbie, it could be a Monster High, it could be Ever After High, any doll. You can even buy a dollar store doll and just practice on it. Or if you have a thrift store doll, or if you have a really, really old doll that you want to give a new life to, you can use that as well. So literally just choose a doll. My thought process on the molds is very specific to the character that I'm, I'll be working on. Now I've been very, very obsessed with Barbie, uh, specifically if they're like anime inspired or if they're actually like realistic people I'm trying to recreate, then I'll use Barbie like Model Muse, Silkstone, Made to Move, all of that. And literally Barbie has so many face molds to choose from, you can literally go crazy. Um, but if, I, if I'm going for more cartoonish look, it would be Ever After High, Monster High, LOL dolls, and so on. The dolls that you want to work with changes all the time. It's really fun to put your style in so many different sizes of heads. When you have chosen your perfect muse, your medium, your canvas, your doll, 
The next thing you need to do is obviously to remove the factory paint. And now this you can use 100% acetone, which I prefer to use. I actually get them from local dollar, dollar stores. They literally have, oh my god, <laughs> they literally have 100% acetone in dollar stores and it's amazing. Um, we can also use nail polish remover, however, um, there are nail polish remover that doesn't have acetone and in my experience um, That can get really smudgy and it's not enough strength to really like Satisfyingly remove the factory paint so as much as possible. I would suggest 100% acetone Just be very very careful. It's very dangerous So just be careful when you're handling acetone and um, yeah, that's what you need to remove the factory paint. So the next one is our super infamous Mr. Super Clear, Mr. Super Queer, or our MSC. Um, she's right here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see her. This one's a brand new one. Um, I order a lot of these in bulk because sometimes I really run out and this ca one can can maybe work with maybe four or five dolls. Five is actually pushing it, but maybe four dolls, um, this can work. It is a Japanese product, I believe, and that's why it's a little bit harder to source if you live in other countries. Um, like I said, they just added it in Amazon, so I was really, really happy. I used to get this from eBay, and yeah, it's very expensive for what it is. Um, I believe a can is at least 18 to 20 dollars. And um, yeah, very, very toxic. Um, I specifically get the Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat. Make sure you guys get flat. Even if it's not UV cut, make sure it's flat. And um, yeah, the UV Cut, it just kind of has more of a protective layer against the sun. I mean, my dolls are never in the sun, so I feel like it's fine, but you know, you never know. Um, and yeah, that is pretty, pretty essential for my doll repaints. I know that a lot of people are asking for, uh, for alternatives, and there are alternatives. There are other alternatives that so you can use a airbrush machine, but I, I'd rather just have this because it's just easier. Um, and yeah, very toxic by the way, very, very toxic. <laughs> of course this is just right now and if I discover alternatives I will definitely use it in a video and I will let you guys know, of course, I mean, I, I trust me, I hate spraying this, I hate accidentally inhaling it, it's bad for the lungs. Uh, and that's why our next material is a mask. Now this is our mask uh, and it is also needed for... It is crucial and it is important and it is needed when you are using Mr. Super Clear because like I said, she is toxic. I actually got this from Home Depot and she looks like this. She has a filter that you can change. This is the 3M. Um, oh my god, Organic Vapor P100 3M0921. Um, I do not want to put it on right now because she has a full mug right now and it will ruin it. Um, but yes, um, in the part two I'll show you guys uh, I, that I'm actually using this. And so yeah, I feel like we need to buy that stick that tells you where the wind is going and you want to spray alongside that because Imagine if you were just like, psh, and then the wind is like, boom. I don't know, hospital maybe? <laughs> um, but yeah, so just make sure to spray with the wind um, when you are using Mr. Super Clear. Um, it's just, it's just better. It's just healthier. And um, yes. The next material is watercolor pencils. Now this one, the only brands that I consistently use for years is Derwent watercolor pencils. And that is because it's not chalky. It glides really, really well. 
And it, if you go to Dick Blake's, you can actually buy individual ones. So I can literally just keep buying black. I can keep buying white. I can keep buying the neutral colors. And it's great. I believe you can also go to the Blake's um, website and buy individual pencils. And obviously the more you buy, the more discount you have, I believe. But yeah, I love Durant watercolor pencils. In my previous materials video, at that time, I was also using Favor Castell. But it's just a little bit chalky um, for me. It still works, but I, I, I feel like I remember it can chip off the Mr. Super Clear layer, and it can it can be very very chalky looking. Um, and I remember not being able to get really really smooth lines. So, and that's why I went to Derwent Watercolor Pencils, which is so, so, so amazing. You can literally buy a whole pack, all of the colors are there, and then you can just keep buying singles of the blacks, the neutrals, you know, the beige, the, the nudes that you need, the browns. Um, and so, yeah, because the pencils is very, very soft, you have to keep sharpening it to get the tips and no I'm not using it wet however you can take the pencil wet the tip of it and then take a brush and withdraw the color from it but that obviously gives you paint kind of like you know like a watercolor paint that's not and that's not how I draw it. If your pencil is wet you most likely will not be able to get like really sharp lines and uh, yeah. The next one is our soft pastels now this one I use for blushes, for contouring, for eyeshadow, for your lips. Literally, this will just give you the airbrushed look. This will give you a softer color deposit and it's just really, really nice. It's more like a diffused pigment. The one I'm using right now is Mumio Pastels. I saw Catherine use it and I was like, oh my god, she's pigmented. Um, so I tried it out. Before I was using a generic brand from Michaels and although it did work, you had to scrape it. You had to scrape the pastels in order to get the color and you can still do that. You can definitely just go to Michaels and get chalk pastels. Make sure it's chalk or soft pastels, not oil, um, because that's completely different. And um, yeah, you can just like scrape it with a X-Acto knife and get the color from there. But the soft pastels from Mungyo is just soft from the beginning. I don't have to do that. There are some colors that I do have to do, but in general, all of it is really, really great. So now if you guys have money um, to spend, the pan pastels are freaking amazing. They are literally really, really great. It says ultra soft, extra suave, ultra ten tendre, and it's beautiful. This is the one I used for him, and it's pigmented the house! It's just very expensive. I got it from Blix. Um, I believe one is like $6. If you guys have seen my him video, this is what I use for his skin. Um, I decided to invest in this because I love red. It just withdraws so much pigment. Um, it's freaking crazy. I literally... I, la I layer a lot of my, my pastels just to be safe, but if you guys watch my him, literally the first layer, it was already covered. I was like... Period. The next one is acrylic paint. You can use it for literally anything. The scleras, the iris, lipstick, teeth, anything. Like designs, tattoos, anything you can use um, acrylic paint for. If anything, if you don't have Mr. Super Clear and you still want to try and draw a face, you can even try and just do it with paint. Any brand really will work. I like getting matte black, glossy black, matte white, glossy white, and like I love the neutrals, I love metallics. Um, all, of course, this also goes with like the costuming, the shoes and all that, not just face up. Um, so yeah, a good amount of acrylic paint in your disposal is really, really great also. The next one is our gloss. So the gloss that I personally love to use is Sculpey Gloss Glaze. And I've been using this since I was in high school. I used to make clay charms and it still works with the doll. I use it specifically for the lips. 
Um, actually, that's it. Um, I stop glossing my eyes. A lot of people are asking me why I stop glossing the eyes. It's just when you have all of these lights and you're trying to photograph a doll or trying to take videos of them, like the only thing you see in the doll's eyes are reflection of your ring light of all the lights and I didn't like that. Whenever I'm trying to post a picture, I would have to edit the doll. I would have to edit the eyes to make it look normal and not like, it's not like reflecting all of these crazy ring lights. Um, so I stopped doing it for the eyes. Obviously, w whenever we draw catch lights, it's already there and technically that's the reflection, you know what I mean? So that's kind of why I stopped doing it. I guess I would gloss up the eyes if I did not draw a artificial catch lights to it. So maybe if I didn't do that um, in my dolls, I would then add the gloss. Uh, the gloss is just beautiful on the lips anyway. The doll's lips, it catches the light so beautifully and it creates such a realistic look. And so that's what I use. But the Sculpey Glaze I got from Michaels, you can get from Amazon literally anywhere. Um, it's pretty accessible. And that's pretty much it for literally the essentials of materials um, for a face up. At least for what I do, at least for um, how I do my face ups, those are my essentials. Obviously, like I said, we have add-ons like glitter, pearlex powders, brushes, various brushes. I customize some of my brushes, specifically the one that I use for my eyes. I literally cut that up. Oh, lashes. Um, I, use, uh, I use a lot of 3D lashes for most of my projects and they're literally just dollar store lashes like I got I get them from Daiso I get them from beauty supply stores I literally get them from a dollar store even and it's really really fun you can like customize them I love using the individual ones because then you could just like layer them and create like a mink type of effect. I mean, that's really pretty much it for the essential materials on a repaint. Like I said, this is just the general ones. Each specific doll and project can differ. Like literally, I grew my materials over time. I was like, oh, for this doll, I need lashes. So l let me buy lashes. And just over time, I just keep buying lashes. And, oh, for this doll, I need a specific acrylic paint. So I would get that acrylic paint, and now I have it. There are some of the materials that you want to start with in general, like the Mr. Super Clear, Acetone, you know, all of that. But in terms of colors and how big you want your collection and color, um, palette to be it really grows over time. I feel like most hobbies is like that. It grows over time It's never like a one-time purchase and that's really pretty much it for the basic essentials of a face-up Like I said, these are just essentials for me so it can really vary from person to person and from project to project. Um, that's pretty much it. And now let's go ahead and head on to some of your questions. Um, so these questions are from Instagram. I posted a story asking you guys about your frequently asked questions about doll repaints and face ups. And so here we go. There's a lot of them, um, but some of them are kind of uh, repeated and some of them are just not questions. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and get started. The first question is from That Plastic Biz. With spraying MSC, how far do you spray it and how do you, uh, and how much do you spray at a time? Okay, I will, this will be shown in my um, part, in the part two, but it's literally like this for me. So extend your arm as far as possible and you want to do a, uh, a cross almost. So it's either and then, or and then you kind of wait, and then you do that again. So I do that at least, I think I do at least three spray, three sprays, like one, oh, no, 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 three times. So one, two, three, and then, you know, and then I go in. <laughs> this is from Toothy underscore cat 2379 um, which part of the face up would you say is the most annoying oh my god uh, that's a good question uh, oh getting things symmetrical a lot of you guys think that my uh, face ups are 
symmetrical, which, oh my god, thank you. But literally, it's really not. The You'll see when I'm adding more eyeliner, that means I'm trying to get it symmetrical. I'm like, the eyeliner is only supposed to be this thick, but it's just like, boom. Um, that's just me trying to make it symmetrical. I'm also really dramatic also, so I'm like, why not? Um, but a trick for that is I have a mirror in front of my workstation and I would literally um, take the doll in front of the mirror because every time you mirror an image, you'll see the difference. It's kind of like us, like when we look at the mirror, that is the image that we have growing up. And so when we invert ourselves or when we look in the pictures, I'm like, who is that creature? That is not me. It's just so, so different and, you know, we just get accustomed to our mirrored self. So I do that with the dolls. I would take, so imagine this is the doll's face looking at me. I would face it onto the mirror and I'm like, oh crap, the, this eye, she's not it. Um, but yeah, symmetry is very, very annoying. D Dilly underscore Dory asks, how do you find your style? It's obvious, drag queens inspire me so much. The makeup uh, trends inspire me so much. But if we're really, really rewinding back, um, anime, manga styles are my go-to. My very, very specific um, style that I try to go for is the anime, the manga, Magic Knight, Ray Earth. It is from the 90s. If you guys look them up, actually, I'm showing you. Um, they have dramatic eyes. Even the guys have strong eyeliner. Um, not a lot of lashes. The girls get all the lashes, but the guys are all just like, the angles are so beautiful. Like, the eyeliner is just on fleek, and oh my god, this anime is just my childhood. It's so beautiful. I loved all of them, and my goodness, I wanted to be all the three of them. Specifically Umi, because she had the long hair. Um, growing up, when I was a child, I was very, very much biased to whoever had long hair. So that was Umi from Magic Knight Grey Earth, that was Sailor Venus and Sailor Mars from Sailor Moon, that was Chi from freaking Chobits. <laughs> um, so yeah, I loved, I love, love, love Magic Knight Grey Earth type of eyes and I reference it all the time. Sailor Moon I would say, however, my eyes are definitely a little bit more smized than um, the Sailor Moon big eyes. Um, but I think that's where the 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 drag queen um, also comes into it. <laughs> How do I know it's time to stop adding pigment and do another layer of sealant? And this question is by Medusa Lith Pax. I'm actually going to show that into part two. I will show you how like the pencil just won't do it anymore. How to make paint not look clumpy in a face up. This is by Blazing Cinders 90. Um, water it down. Uh, you really do have to water your paint, the house down boots, um, to make it as kind of um, as thin as possible. You really have to thin in your paint. Um, I've noticed with acrylic paint, it can get really chunky. Um, so just water it down. With, with water. Second favorite thing, um, either than um, eyeliner. This is by I hate, I hate, I hate it here. ISTG. I don't know what that means. Um, love doing a sharp, dramatic brow. Most dolls that I do are the smize look, the intense like, like that's that's what I love, um, and that's what I like to do, and so that's my favorite part, especially when the, the eyebrows is just really, really sharp. It's like the ombre brows. I like it really, really sharp over here, and then really, really faded in um, the, the center. I love that. Teachers.444 ask, how many layers of MSC do you use on a face-up? Does it depend on the doll? Yes. I've done like, 20 layers on a doll, but that includes full body. Um, and I've also done like five. Um, so it really just depends. I consider myself very extra with my layers because I love going just, I just like going with lots of layers um, to build more colors. 
The downside is that when you have a lot of layers, I would say more than four MSC layers, it can get into the cracking stage. Because MSC can crack, it's not like vinyl where it stays flexible. I work on my doll heads on the doll's bodies. I would do everything that I can to prevent myself from squishing the doll in the end. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, but yeah, um, too many layers can end can make your doll's faces crack if you squish them. <laughs> and that's why you don't really want to re reroute after you do your face up. You don't want to do so many things that will cause physical like um, squish to the doll's head because it will definitely crack. I cracked my My Little Pony Twilight doll. I had to redo her face. I cracked, I believe, Blossom because I was working on her without her body and then I ended up, I, I put her body back and I'm like, crap, I just squished it and it's like <laughs> um, So yeah, the less layers um, that you do, the more flexible it can be. However, the more layers you do, the more kind of color and blending that you can do. Um, so it really just depends. I really hope I explained that correctly. I feel like I did it, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, the most layers I've done was for Jeffree Star um, because of the tattoos. Um, it was that the whole thing was actually it was maybe more than 20 layers because I was working um, part by part. But um, yeah. Oh my god, it's really hot. Lord, give me strength. This summer weather, I'm over it. Okay, the next one. This is by the Preskilla. Uh, what is your favorite color scheme to work with? I love black and red. So much. I just, I love wearing black and red. I love black and red. It's just my favorite thing. And I just recently watched Kakegurui, the gambling anime. And that, oh my god, dream freaking uniform. They wear black and black and red. I was like, oh my god. And they're mini skirts. I was like, period. Um, I'm definitely channeling my Yumiko Jabami one of these days. But yes, um, black and red, sometimes with purple. Oh my god, Sailor Mars vibes. I love it. Those are like that is my triad of colors that I love to work with. Mara Dobin asks, how long does it take to get good at repainting the face, especially the eyes? Um, okay, so I've, I've been drawing. I've been painting, I've been drawing all my life. And so, oops, sorry. <laughs> and so when I, when I was first repainting a doll, I was like, this is easy. Like, I've been, I, I know how to freaking draw an eye. Like, I can do this. Girl, no. <laughs> drawing on a 3D face, on a 3D object, is literally not the same. It's like, whoa, this is different territory. Um, but just really keep practicing. It's really just practice. Like most of my earlier stages of face ups is actually posted on YouTube. So if you want um, to see that, you can definitely do that. You can definitely see the evolution of my face ups. Um, and I'm still learning a lot of techniques and a lot of styles. So. Yeah, just just do it and don't be afraid to fail. It can be erased. Have you accidentally destroyed a face up? And this is by Renee Choice. Yes, like I said, my Twilight, my uh, Blossom. I mean, they're they're not noticeable. Like in camera, you won't even notice it. But because I've been working on this face for so many days, and just the bare minimum of one crack, like gets to me. I'm like. Oh my god. Like specifically like my Powerpuff Girls, the cracks are all in their, like this is the head, they're all here, um, mostly. And I'm like, oh my god. Like I said, because you do spend so many time, like a long time on creating this art, it sucks that it, it, even, it even has one slight like crack, you know what I mean? Um, so yes. <laughs> Cho, Cho .c asks, where would you use MSC if you have multiple dogs? You have to spray it outside, um, really. So just keep your dogs in when you're spraying um, and just wait for the wind to blow. Um, I've used fans before, like to really direct it to like leave. <laughs> it's very like toxic smelling. Like you know how like when you smell acetone accidentally, you're like, oh crap. Or like when you smell Sharpie, you're like, ooh, but you're like, 
<laughs> um, spray outside. Spray, spray, spray outside. Spray on a spray outside. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, dolls ask how to not make your hands shake when repainting, specifically Barbie heads. So Barbie heads are they're, they're definitely very very small, um, but I tend to um, use my pinky to hold onto something. So how do I hold? So I usually hold my dolls like this, and I would rest my hands somewhere. Um, you really do have to rest your hand, your pinky, or some sort of your hand somewhere in order in order to do it. You're not definitely you're not really like doing that. Um, I, I I think that helps me um, uh, repainting. Um, so try doing that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Just try to rest your hands somewhere comfortably and then do your face up. Charles underscore way twelve thirty one ask how long does it usually take to do a full repaint? Ooh, I don't work on my dolls straight out like obviously I you want to take breaks because then you'll just go crazy just looking at this piece of plastic I think I work on a face for at least three days um, I'm not sure how many hours per day I definitely tried to do a face up for one day and it drove me insane it was pretty much the most stressful day of my life it was the saddest day of my life I was like oh my god I just I'm like trying to do this. Um, I was also on a deadline, so I was like, eh. I find that working in your comfortable pace, like you appreciate the art a little bit more and you're not as stressed about it. I feel like when you are really stressing about you, like you trying to finish in one day or you just trying to finish in general, um, like if you're working against the pacing of yourself, then I feel like it's not fun. But yeah, I would say a good three days for me would be my face-up routine. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to be a little bit faster, but you know. Have you ever thought of making yourself as a doll? Um, asked by Sha Mia Par. Um, yes, of course. I have an outfit actually for myself in drag and also in boy version. However, I just don't feel like that's an exciting video. I don't find myself that exciting um, to be made of a doll um, and I also like to change up my style and I would just be stressing out if my doll is not matching my current style and then I would have to do two of them a drag friendly one and then a male presenting one so I don't know well you never actually you know you know what you never know so one of these days maybe but as of right now yes I've thought about it no, there's no plans of it right now. <laughs> Yokai Monster Horror Fanatic asks, After finishing the face up, how do I fully seal it? Can I just use MSC? And after gloss, do I use MSC again? Good question. Uh, yes, your MSC is your primer, your layer maker, and also your sealer. I like to seal my dolls like at the end two times just to really secure it. So I would seal it wait like maybe 30 minutes and then seal it again with Mr. Super Clear and then you do your gloss all of your shimmer your glitter all, everything that needs to be shiny that's when you do it and no you don't spray MSC again um, you've already sealed the paint job that you've done and so the gloss is just another layer the um, the glitter is just another layer seal the face completely first before you add anything shimmery anything glossy and all that um, and yeah, you don't have to spray after that. Next question is by Precipitation. <laughs> How much money does a repaint cost in total? Oof. When you tally it all up, I feel like it's, it's a very scary number. It could be like hundreds, I would say. But like I said, this hobby takes a while to build up. It's not really... There's only a few things that you would need at the like from the get-go. I would say it would be the Mr. Super Clear, which I said is like 20 bucks. Mungyo Pastels, which is probably 10 to 20 bucks. The Derwent Watercolor Pencils, I believe is also 20 bucks. Um, paint, Acetone, maybe roughly under 100 to get started. And then you add onto your collection and to your toolkit um, while you're creating more characters um, because you are needing different things for each 
different character. Um, like if you need glitter for this this character, then you buy the glitter. The only ones that I repurchase all the time is um, a few of my Durant watercolor pencils, which is black, white, nude, um, burnt umber, sienna. Um, so just a few of those, and also Mr. Super Clear. The rest I still have from when I purchased them like two years ago. So, yeah. Luciani Taliucci asks, How long does Mr. Super Queer dry? <laughs> um, I give it a good 30 minutes. Um, and also, please, when you are making your Mr. Super Clear dry, do not leave it outside because dust can get into it. But also, do not leave it in front of you because you will be inhaling the fumes. So I like to leave it like outside of my room or like I would have a fan on, like just circling around. Um, and I would give it a good 30 to 45 minutes and then I'll start the layer again. Kiwi Otter asks how to keep motivation when things don't work as planned. You just gotta keep moving. I'm, I'm like, I already started this doll. There's no way, I mean, I'm not gonna not work on it, you know what I mean? So it's not like a choice. <laughs> I feel like there was so many mishaps. Which, which other mishap? Oh, the brats, like the sunglasses for Sasha. I was like, I'm already, I mean, she's already done. And I mean, blame me for freaking adding sunglasses. Um, but we just gotta keep going, you know what I mean? I do have my off days, obviously. So I would just watch funny videos, inspiring videos. Like if I'm making a character and they have like soundtrack, I would listen to that. I, I was definitely like watching like Avatar or like Azula Facts while I was working on Azula. Or like when I was working on Sasha, I would listen to Bratz like nonstop. Um, so yeah, I guess that kind of helps me keep going. Um, I watch a lot of comedy. I listen and watch Bob and Monet's podcast a lot. It's literally pure serotonin for me. Also talking to friends that share the same like hobby maybe, um, that helps even online. Um, I talk to Mark Jonathan a lot. I'm like, girl, something happened. Like, what do you think? Like, there was, we, we pretty much rant about each other's, like, when we're working on the doll. I'm like, girl, she's not working out. Like, this glitter is not working out. <laughs> to me, that really helps me, like, also be motivated. Artform.mimi asks, If I wanted to touch up my doll's factory paint without any supplies, is nail polish good? Uh, do not use nail polish, but do use acrylic paint. I feel like nail polish will be a little bit too harsh. It does have a lot of chemicals in it, and I don't think that's good for the doll vinyl. Definitely watch Froggy Stuff. They have so many makeovers on dolls without actually like ripping off the factory paint, and they would just paint over like a new iris or something, and they were they would use acrylic paint. So yeah, use acrylic paint, don't use nail polish, and it would be so fun. And you could definitely just remove it also with water and soap. And I feel like that's a better material. Sugar Skull 1480. Do you use photo reference for eyes or makeup? Um, not all the time. Only if it's for specific people or characters. Like, obviously, like for Trixie Mattel makeup, you want to have a reference photo. But for like other characters, I really don't because obviously, I'm putting them into my style, like Cynthia with um, a smized eyes, like a drag queen smized eyes. Like I don't need a reference for that because uh, that's already my style that I always do. Um, so yeah, it really just depends on the character. Oh my god, we made it through the FAQs. A lot of um, symmetry questions. Oh my god, you guys really think my faces are symmetrical. Thank you. I really appreciate it, but lord. They're not. But that's pretty much it for this video. I gave you a list of the essential materials for a face up and also I answered some of your frequently asked questions. If you guys want to check out the part two where I take you into a slow down version of a face repaint. Um, by slow down, like I said, it's I filmed every single layer. I believe I did seven layers or eight layers for that doll. Obviously, it's still time lapse, so it's not completely boring, but I definitely showed you guys when to um, when it's time to add another layer and so on and so forth. Definitely check that out. I will link it 
at the ending card. I will link it everywhere. Uh, it's hard to miss. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys so much for watching part one, and I'll see you in part two.